Hi, it's Tim. Welcome to the channel. Today we are back with the 1581. These are the disk drives that we built on the channel a few weeks back. So it's time to revisit this drive and see if we can get it working properly and reliably and not just sometimes. <laughs> comments to my previous video and from talking to other people and other YouTubers and other people that have built drives like this, one thing seems to crop up time and time again and that is you need to use a converted drive converted to an Amiga drive, not use a PC drive. Also it begs the question if a converted drive works, why does the adapter board not work? Because surely the adapter board is doing the same thing that the conversion does. Or is it? We ought to find out. So what we're going to do initially is take these nine drives. I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven here and the two inside the cases and we're going to label them so that we know which drive they are. Then we'll test them as they are and see whether we've got anything that actually works straight away. And then we will build up one of these. This is another Amiga floppy adapter that will convert one of these into an Amiga drive in theory. And we'll see if that works. Then we're going to convert some of these to Amiga drives and try them again and see if that works. So we're going to try both situations, a PC drive as a PC drive but adapted and then a PC drive converted to an Amiga drive and not adapted and we'll see if there actually is a difference on the same drive. So let's take these apart. I'm going to need to unscrew that and just grab a sharpie. So in sort of arbitrary way, that is going to be drive number one. That is going to be drive number two. This is an actual Amiga drive. I took this out of my Amiga 500. That is going to be number six. So of course we're not going to convert that at all and that should hopefully work first time. And the drive that's in the dark one is going to be number nine. Ah, this is the one that is supposedly already converted. But that is going to be number nine. Now the thing about this one, we know that it doesn't work or at least we know that it hasn't worked, but I didn't convert this, I bought it already converted and although it does work in my Amiga there may be something wrong with it, I don't know. That's a questionable drive in any case and the fact that it hasn't got a lid means that it does have some sort of history. So what am I going to test this on? Well I'm going to test these on my C128. So here we've got the 128 set up. 1581, 1581, pile of disk drives. So these are all numbered one, to, one through nine. What I have done is I've printed a variation of the disk tray like this so that it will go in here basically and leave space for this capacitor. Now this is so that we can put this five volt supply back in and run both drives together. The CD32 power supply that I was using before has been put somewhere safe along with the remaining PCBs which means we shall probably never see those again. Consequently I've got hold of this which is a c64lover.com power supply for CD32, CD1541-2 um, and fifteen eighty one. This came from Retro Lemon, not sponsored, but they are very good service. It took, I think, two days from when I ordered it. So this will power the drive. And if we put that back in, then we can have both of them going at the same time 
device 8 and device 9. Maybe we will do that later, but for now we're just going to use this drive. And the first test we're going to do is for all the drives that are currently PC drives, we're going to plug them into this adapter and see if they go. It's going to be a very simple test. Plug it on, talk to the drive, stick a disk in it, see if we can read it. And that is going to give us a baseline for all the drives to know whether we can read a directory. And I'm going to use this disk, which is a known working disk, 1581 demo utilities disk. Just purely to read the disk, it is going to be set as read only. And we're going to start with this disk because it is already plugged in. This is drive number one. It is a Samsung SFD 321B. Right. Power supplies are on. Okay, as always, we can hear that drive rattling. Okay, demo disk. Immediately that worked. Okay, I'm just going to reset the drive so that we can see. So that's the DOS message that just basically says we've got the standard DOS ROM in there. Let's do this again. F3 gives us a directory. Except it didn't. Drive not ready is what we would expect at this particular point with the disk not in. Put the disk in. And then it worked. So that is kind of the problem that we've got. What I'm going to do is a second test, which is to put another disk in here and see if it recognises the disk change. Now it's important to do it with a different disk because of that. That has not recognised the disk change because the directory is exactly the same as before. If I power it off and power it on, there we go. Now we can do a directory and you'll see it is definitely... Okay, that gives us the basic start point for this drive. Switch it off. Let us now change to disk number two. Drive number two is a Tech Media TFD 310 Revision C. Okay, I never remember which order you're supposed to power these up in. So, the front panel light is on, which is normal for these PC drives. There's no disk in the drive, let us just do our... Yes. We've got that. Stick a disk in the drive and hit F3. And that worked. Directory listing was OK. Disk change. Disk change OK. So that seems fine. Let's hit reset. Again, that gave us no power up prompt, no prompt. Let's just take the disc out. Okay, power it up. Once again, F3, Amiga disk, F3, 
F3 and that gives us the demo disc. So that drive appears to work. Now whether it would still work in an hour's time, I don't know, but that is not this test. So let's go on to drive number three. Drive number three is an NEC FD1231T. It doesn't have a button, so we're gonna have fun with that. And also the cables are reversed on the thing. Anyhow, power on the computer, power on the drive. Green light comes on. That's interesting. Simple error channel doesn't come back. Okay, switch that off. I'm going to put the disc in and hit F3. And that actually came up in order to get the disc out. Put another disc in, F3, disc change OK. And now DS dollar is OK. Drive number four is a Sony MPF 920F. It's got a bit of grot in it. Power on the computer, power on the drive. LED comes on before we put the disc in. As before, reset DS dollar does not return. So I'll put the disc in. F3, directory is OK. Take the disk out. Put a new disk in. Disk change is OK. Take the disk out. As expected. Reset the drive, or reset the computer, and that was OK. This is the first drive that resetting the computer has been OK. That was drive number four. That was drive, drive number five. This is a Samsung SFD321B. This is one of our original batch of drives. Power it on, we hear the drive whir, light comes on. DS dollar is fine, let's do a reset. Reset is fine, put the test demo disk in F3. Read error. That's a new one. Try it again. Let's put another disk in. Also a read error. That's interesting because this drive before didn't have that problem. It had the 74 drive not ready error, but it did not have a read error. Different computer, but that shouldn't make a difference because all this is doing is sending commands. Although it could be sending them in fast mode. So I guess to check that, let's reboot it into 64 mode. and do an old fashioned load dollar comma eight. No, that didn't make a difference.
I'm going to trust that it's probably a read error. Okay, on to the next one. Okay. Drive 6 is an Amiga drive. It has come directly out of my A500 Plus. And so we've taken the uh, adapter off. Power on the 128, power on the 1581. Of course, there is no LED on the front, so we can't see anything there. DS dollar works. Put the demo disc in. F3, that is fine. Swap it over for another disc. F3, and that is fine. Reset the Reset the 128. Take the disc out. Try that again. That was fine. That, of course, is not going to work because there's no disc in it. Correct. So that resets. The reset does not work if there's a disc in the drive. If there's no disc in the drive, then it does work. Okay, on to the next one. 80. Power on the 128. Power on the drive, the light comes on. DS dollar is fine. Put a disc in, let's put the demo disc in. Directory is fine. Take the disc out directory, that should give us an error. Light is flashing. Correct. Different disc in. That has recognised the different disc. Swap that out. Different disc, that is fine. So take it out. Reset is OK. So that drive seems to be fine. Let's go on to drive number 8. Drive number eight is another Chinon FB354. It's the same drive as the Amiga drive that we had earlier on. I do not believe this is an Amiga drive. I think this is a PC drive. So let's try it. Power on, power on. There's no LED on the front. DS dollar is fine. Demo disk. Gives drive not ready. Same thing, drive not ready. Okay, maybe in that case it actually is an Amiga drive. So I'm going to take the adapter off and plug it directly into the board. So now this is wired in as an Amiga drive. So put the disc in it. Drive not ready. So it looks like maybe this is not working. Drive number nine, this is the drive out of the grey 1581. It's still on its sled, but we're testing everything in this one just for consistency. So this is a converted Amiga drive. Power it up. Light comes on.
drive not ready. Try the other disc. Drive not ready. Reset. Disk in and do a reset. So that was okay resetting it with a disk in it, but maybe that's because it's giving drive not ready errors. It could be the fact that this has not got a lid on it, it means it could be that maybe the head has been damaged. I have no way of knowing. Okay, so that is our batch of nine discs, six of which are new and three of which were existing. And all the new discs behaved impeccably, apart from the chin-on, which didn't seem to want to know at all. And that is PC drive with the adapter. And in one case, Amiga drive. Or oh, sorry, in two cases, Amiga drive. The old discs that we tested with before, all of them had problems. And all of them were SFD 321Bs. The first one that we tried, disc number one, that was the most, most working. It did give us some drive not ready errors. And it didn't recognise the disc change. But we did have it working sometimes. One thing that multiple people have made me aware of is this capacitor C5. Now this is one of the decoupling capacitors. You'll see there's a one for every IC and it goes basically between ground and 5 volts. And the idea is that it's supposed to smooth out high frequencies and um, stop a certain amount of interference going on with the signals. This particular capacitor C5 is only connected to ground. It is not connected to 5 volts. And we can demonstrate that by setting up the BPBP. -BP. What I'll do is I'll basically show each capacitor connected to 5 ground. So the logical says that that side of that capacitor will be connected to that side of that capacitor. And that side of that capacitor. And this side of this capacitor is going to be connected to this side of this capacitor. There we go. So with C5, we can check that it is connected on this side. I'll just use C3 as the example. C3, this end of C3 is connected to this end of that, that, and that, and so on. So connecting it to C5, nothing. Now, I thought it was important to run the first round of tests, leaving that in exactly the same state as it was before, so that we have a consistent baseline. Because if I fixed that before running the initial tests, we would not know whether the drives working was a result of the drives being different or because I'd fixed that capacitor. So I'm going to put that to one side and we're going to look at the other drive. And you see C5 is back in the same place. We'll just check that. So that's the ground side. And that's the 5 volt side, and that is definitely connected. So on this board, that is not a problem. Okay, that's drive number nine. 
What I'm going to do now is build up one of these Amiga floppy adapters. So this has come from a project that is on GitHub and you can download the Gerber files from that and you can then send them off to PCBWay and PCBWay will build it. And that's exactly what I did and I did it in yellow because why not? If you do this, I recommend that you check the Gerber files first in something like KiCad because when I did it, the drill file for the holes was misaligned compared with the rest of the PCB and that added some delays to the process. So just be careful. usual thing, 10 boards, $5. So the thing about this is mostly it's surface mount items. So I've got a stack of parts, 34 way female, 34 way male. So we have LS38, two connectors. There are some pull up resistors and some capacitors on here, plus an LED. So you can see these are tiny little things. This is going to be practice for my surface mount soldering, which has never been very good. Now, because these are not labeled, it is important not to lose the original packaging because otherwise you'll never know what they are again. Right, we're going to start with the tantalum capacitors C1 and C4. So that is C1 and that is C4. It does not mark the polarity on the PCB, but I can see that the ground plane is that side and the ground plane is that side. Now these tantalum capacitors are polarized and hopefully you can see there is a brown stripe at one end. That is positive. I went online and double checked that. So what I'm going to do is add a tiny amount of solder. Good. So that's how we do it. So once again this goes on to C4 and positive is that end. And the other side. So these are not the straightest and neatest soldering jobs, but they will do. So this is 330 ohms. This is R8. It goes next to the diode, which we don't actually have, but you never know, we might get one shortly. And the process is going to be exactly the same. That is done. So that's all the surface mount components on, at least the ones that we have. Now we've got the IC socket regular 14 pin, the usual technique for this, opposite corners, okay now we can put the sideways one on here Now it's one each of these connectors. So this one is too floppy. When it goes onto the drive, it will go like that. Yes, because on the grey one, the cutout is that side. So it's going to go that way around. And we'll have to test this with the board out of the case because obviously that's not going to fit. Oh, 
awkward soldering it at an angle and trying to get it so that the camera can see it. go now the last thing to put on is this connector so which way around does it go well let's plug the cable in now we know the yellow one is 12 volts so on here it is does have a legend 12 volts is the one at the end <laughs> So that is it finished, give it a quick scrub, there we go, and we have a quad 2 input NAND gate to add. So this is different to the other one which I believe is using a NOR gate. There we go, that's ready for us to try. Got some LEDs, variety of colours. I think that's white, that's blue, that's red, yellow, green. Should we go for blue? Okay, so the colour is pretty much entirely down to the packaging. Is that the right way up? Yes, I think it is. So a little dab of flux. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to balance it on there for the sake of balance. So green bar is at that end and that is negative soon. And then just a tiny dab of solder on the other side. There we go, that should be soldered. So to plug it in, we're going to plug it in, just hold it out of the way like that. So it plugs in this way around, like that. Then the power supply goes into that. And the drive board, we're going to go with drive number two. This is the tech media. Now, the interesting thing, I had a look at the schematic for this and the schematic for the other one, and they are quite different. I'll show you that in a second. So, I don't know if this is even going to work because this chip is um, decoding the ready signal for this, which doesn't exist on these drives, and it's generating it. But it's generating it from different signals compared to the Tom's Hardware um, card. So, I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, it's connected up right, but is that going to be the right way for the drive? And is this going to be different to an actual Amiga in that respect? Okay, off, off. Our disc number three is at the ready. So, here we go. And look at that. I heard the drive spin. That's a good sign. Disc is in the drive. OK, 
can't see it on the overhead, I'll zoom out a bit. But this is still not getting us anywhere. So I've had a look at the schematic. I've worked out the schematic for the Tom's hardware board, which I did basically by a process of reverse engineering it. And this board we actually have schematics for. So basically um, drive select zero is routed to drive select B on the PC drive and that happens on both of them. Um, drive select, I mean, there's so many lines going across sometimes you can't see which one goes to which. So index goes to index, index is that's a pulse every time that the disk passes go. Select zero, PC drives are wired the opposite way around in terms of A and B drive and so you have to swap that around. I'm not quite sure what this is doing with Motor zero goes to motor one. That's true on both of these. Motor zero is not connected in the Tom's one, but it goes to pin 12, which is not connected on that drive. I don't know why. Pin four in use is the drive LED on an Amiga. That's not connected on here. See, on this, this is the actual um, pin out of the 1540, 15. 81 board, sorry, and 4, 6, 12 and 14 are physically not connected to anything. So anything that goes to these, 4 and 6 are not connected on, on either interface. Pin 2 is not connected on the PC, and then everything else goes straight through. So we swap the select signal and we are deriving Disk change from pin 2 goes to disk change on pin 34. That's correct on both. So what we are doing is driving pin 34 on the 1581 side. And you can see in Tom's hardware we use this HCT02 which is acting as a flip-flop. And that is on the motor drive, the motor signal and index signal. Okay, and that is that that is effectively a not gate, that is effectively a not gate. On this we have a two NAND gates and they connect select, which is the signal that we swap, and disk change, which is our pin 34 slash pin two, and that goes through to our ready signal. Now the interesting thing is these are all pulled up with two K2 resistors and the disk change signal index signal, track zero indicator signal, the write protect signal, uh, the write read data signal, sorry, are all pulled up as are these. So I'm going to propose looking at this pin here and seeing what it does, comparing it to what this pin here does on this board. So I'm going to start with this board because at least most of the time we know that it works or some of the time we know it works. Okay I've set this up. So we've got a black wire tacked to ground so that's acting as the ground for our scope and I've got a white wire that is tacked to pin 34 and the reason that I've done it this way is so that you don't see the back of my head instead of what's going on simply so the probe can be um, attached to that and it's securely attached. We don't need to be worrying about what the probe is doing. And I've got a spare probe here in case I want to look at anything else. This is attached to channel one. This is attached to channel two. Channel two is green. Channel one is yellow. In the words of pop black, for those of you watching in black and white, the green is the ball next to the brown. So, Power it on. The ready signal has gone high. All right. Disc three in the drive. So far, nothing has happened. F three. Okay, it's gone low. It went low when the drive started spinning, but we got an error. Drive not ready, and it's gone back to high. Try it again. Didn't even bother. So take the disc out. 
Let's clear the error. Put the disc back in. Drive goes, goes low. Can't read the disc. Okay. Let's try a different disc. Test demo disc. Signal is still high. F3 goes low and it reads the directory. Take the disc out. Signal is still low. Oh, it's gone high now. Is that because I've put a new disc in? Because that would have detected the disc change possibly. Right, so goes low. Having trouble reading it. Drive not ready. So let's take this disc out. Signal goes high. Let's try a different disc. This is CPM version 3. Board of 1581 for the, C, for the C128. It reads that okay. This is mostly going to be MFM, so it's probably not generally readable other than a header. So we've seen how the ready signal works on this um, Tomzo one board. And the ready signal seems to be being consistent regardless of whether the disk is giving us an error or whether it's actually working. Let's change it over and put the other interface on and see what that is doing. Exactly the same situation, same drive. We have the yellow interface. There we go. We've got the ground lead attached again and we've got the white lead attached again. So power on the 128, power on the 1581. DS dollar, that is okay, so our disk three. Ready line is high, as we've seen before, as we would expect. Okay, it is not going low. Let's try a different drive, different disk. Reset the drive. It doesn't even start, it doesn't even try. So let's have a look at some pins. Right, we're going to be looking on here. So the first place to look is the output here, that's pin 6. Pin 6 should be ha 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 I've put this on the wrong one haven't I I've put that on on this signal even so we should see something happen because that's one of the inputs it should change okay I'll come back and put that onto the correct pin Actually, it's worse than that. What I've done is I've put the PC drive into that one and that one into the 1581 and that's the wrong way around. That's the PC side and that's the 1581 side, which actually means this is not going to fit at all because these connectors are going to be in the way. Oh, what an arse. You bloody Pillock. See what I've done? I've actually put these the wrong way around. Two Amiga. I'm going to have to take these connectors off and redo it basically. All right, come back in a bit. Right, it's back together the way it should be, or at least it's built the way it should be. So this side is now going to the drive, and this side is going to the 1581. That connector had to be taken out reversed and swapped and it's changed gender it's now um, a cable 
and you can see because we've now got two cables on here this is never going to fit into the case but that's not the point the point is to try it and see if we can get it to work we've got the same drive in number two power on the one two eight oh. turn on the power supply okay so the one two eight is running let us power up the drive the light comes on good so i'm going to grab a sharpie put an x on that and that will go in our dead parts bin add another 20 quid to the cost of this board so we may as well keep going right 6526 let's put a disc in the drive we will start with our test demo utilities disc let's look at the trace because that's what we're kind of interested in to see if this interface works so this signal is still high remember we've got our wires tacked to the back so I'm going to hit F3 to do a directory and it goes low that's correct and we have the directory listing take the disk out and it goes high doing a directory listing gives us the red flashy flashy and DS dollar says drive not ready which we expect anyway put the disk in the drive F3 signal goes low but we have the flashy flashy and um, nothing on the screen and that has come up with drive not ready now this disk has worked on different computers oh, sorry on um, different drive mechanisms so let's try I think it was this one signal does nothing until we address the drive as soon as we address the drive it reads it so this is another disk actually it's a disk that I formatted on this particular drive off camera let's just verify one of the original disks again That's our off-site disk. And that's our disk three. So disk changes are working and formatting is working. So this is going to be test. So the initial set of tests is complete. All the new drives, which are PC drives, work with both the original adapter board and also the new adapter board. The original set of drives, these ones which are the Panasonic SFD 321Bs, these are more problematic and we have three drives and three sets of results. What I can say is that the results are the same for both adapters. So that rules out the adapter design as being a problem. Now let's just summarize the results for these three drives. So drive number one. Drive number one consistently fails to read a directory the first time you put the disk in the drive or at least the first time you put a disk in the drive after you power it up. You take the disk out and you put a different disk in, it reads it. You then put the first disk back in, it fails to detect the disk change. The first time you format the disk, it fails. The second time you format the disk, it works. That's drive number one. And that's consistent on both adapters. Drive number five, this always fails to read the test demo disk. 
Sometimes it reads disk number three, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it reads some of the other disks, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, it comes up with a 74 drive not ready error. It fails to format a disk. At least what happens is it goes through the motions, tick, 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 tick. And then it comes up and says 27 read error. But if you put that disk in another drive, then it's formatted correctly and it reads quite happily. So it does format the disk, but it fails, I guess, the verification check at the end. So that's drive number five. Drive number nine. This is the pre-converted Amiga drive. And you'll see I've got a, a, a tested label on here that says it was tested on the 11th of March 2022. Uh, so... I've had this a year and it has worked quite happily in my Amiga for a year. Um, now it really does not want to know. It fails to read every disk I put into it. It fails to format any disk that I put into it and it fails with a 25 write error. Don't know why. Don't know what's the problem with this drive. It's not because it's an Amiga drive, it's not using the adapter, it's plugging straight in. Now, I have two other Amiga drives, they are both Chinon drives, and they work fine, plugged directly straight in. At least one of them works fine, the other one has some issues that might be because it needs cleaning or something. Um, these have not been investigated, they haven't been serviced, they, you know, they could have any kind of problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to convert these two drives, number one and number five, into Amiga drives. There is a uh, detailed and easy to follow procedure on the internet. I will post a link to that and um, I'm going to be following it on my iPad and we will see what they do once they've been converted to Amiga drives. Does this make them better? There is um, a feeling out there that having these as Amiga drives makes them work better or makes them work more reliably. Let's find that out. So let's test that theory and let's get on with it. So before I get into modifying the drive, what I'm going to do is fix this capacitor and then put one of these big caps back into this hole here. So what we need to do is connect the 5 volt side, which is that side, to pin 20, which is that end one. And just to confirm it, I will just check on one of these other capacitors, so C3 that should be connected to there, and it is, and on C5, it is not. So that's what we want to do, and then we want to connect that. So I've got some wire, and some solder, and a soldering iron, which I need to switch on. Okay, so let's just tin the end of this. So we want that to go from there to there. There we go, that's on. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I don't have an axial capacitor, so I'm going to have to use a radial one. And this is the positive side, and it's not going to reach, so I'm going to have to add a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just solder that side on from the top, because it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to use a lead from something else. Right, this is simply a piece of wire that I've got lying around. Cut 
that off. So that is now in. Right, we'll put that to one side and we will get our first drive. Drive number one, please. So we need to unscrew this little top screw. So this should come off. Does it slide out? It slides out. Okay, that's it. And then we actually do need to take the bottom plate off because we need to access the PCB. Okay, that comes off. We have three areas that we are going to deal with and they're all in this area here. So we need to take this from here and put that to here. That's the first thing we need to do. That is a zero ohm resistor. So let's see if we can get that off. Plenty of flux. I'm going to have to try and do this with a single soldering iron. And a chunky tip because I don't have another tip handy. Just heat each side until... There we go. And then I'm going to clean this area. Apply some flux. Some solder on the iron. Hold this down. There we go. Area two, which is labeled DS0 and DS1, there, DS0 and DS1. So we need to move the blob from DS1 to DS0. There we go. Part two is this jumper here, these four, which are labelled in use slash NHDD. We need to make sure that they are disconnected. So we need to unblob that blob. There we go, that is unblobbed. Okay, now step three, we solder a wire from DC, which is here, to pin 2, which is that one there, because it's labelled pin 2. Like that. Okay, that should be it. That should be enough to put this back together. So I'm going to write on here Amiga Mod March 24. So that's that one done. Now let's have a look at drive number 9 and see if we can see the problem. Right, well that's interesting. 
that is very different. That's done, that's done. This, that wire has been cut. I don't know what that's doing, so I am going to modify this to be what the um, stuff tells us it should be. So I'm going to take this wire off. Take this wire off this end. Now we can move that zero ohm resistor. Actually, I think these three pads are actually common. That one isn't. Those two are. Okay, so, yeah, this wire connecting to that was basically to fix the broken trace there. I'm going to, so we can sort that out. Once again, I'm going to... There we go. Now the connection may have been functionally the same, but I don't know that. Okay, and then this wire goes to the top. Like that. So we've verified that that change is correct, regardless of what it might have been doing before. That is at DS0. Those four are cleared. That should be fine. Let's put stuff back together and see if anything works. So here we have the connection, 128. Everything's currently switched off. 1581. The drive is plugged back in. This is now set as an Amiga drive, so there's no interface between the drive and the controller board. 12 volts that side goes to 12 volts that side. Correct. 5 volts goes to 5 volts that side. The connector is keyed, so that is good. We have our stack of discs. Let's turn on the 128. The moment of truth, we will switch this on, see if it starts up. Okay, so the red light came on, the green light came on briefly and went out. I heard the drive move, so that is a good sign. So, test demo disc. This is not screwed down. The um, boilerplate is screwed down just simply so that it holds it off. Okay, disc in F3. And that worked first time. Disc out. Different disc in test drive 7 simply because that is the top one. F3. Matrix test 7. I don't know how much of that it filmed, but I've turned it on now. So this, apart from the one, apart from the one failure to read a different directory, it has worked perfectly. So it's plugged in. This is verified as being the correct way around. Yellow is our 12 volts, and that goes from 12 volts that side to 12 volts that side. The cable is plugged in purely as an Amiga because this is now an Amiga drive so we do not have the adapter. The 128 is now switched on. Let's switch the 1581 on. Okay so power light came on, green light came on, went out, the head moved on the drive. Now the green light is still on here. I think what we have to do is basically take that LED off if we don't want it shining through the case. I don't know, I think maybe leave you there, to be honest. Right, so our first test is going to be 
reading the demo disc. Actually, no, our first test is going to be PS dollar. Here we go, let's set the camera. And that's fine. Now we can do F3. Ah. Drive not ready. Now remember, this drive always failed to read this disk. So... Drive not ready. I'm starting to get a picture here, drive not ready. So I'm going to try formatting this. I very much doubt that it's going to format given that it can't read it. Bad disk and I'm going to predict drive not ready. So, for some reason, this one didn't work. Let's go to our infamous not working drive, drive number 9. Power on the 128. Startup is fine. But then it always was. Copyright, so, so on. Ah, now this one is working. And you'll notice that it's detecting the disk change quite happily. Okay, so I'm going to format this drive. Let me get fix. Directory is okay, but of course that will be in memory anyway, so let us put another disk in, check the disk change works. Yep, and then the disk that we just formatted. Perfect. So we just need to find out what has happened to this drive. I suspect that I did something wrong on the um, fix, on the, on the adaptation. So I'm going to take this apart and have another look at it and see if we can see what I did wrong. So I've converted these three drives to Amiga formatted drives. Two of them work fine. The problem is with drive number five, and I've written the drive numbers which were on the metal plates, I've written them on the um, flywheel so that we don't get the drives mixed up. Now drive number five, which is on the test machine at the moment, that has basically stopped working. And I don't know why, Maybe I managed to kill it, um, but now it just gives 74 drive not ready errors. I think I got the conversion correct. I'll put um, all three drives converted on the screen for you now. You can have a look at them and see, um, freeze frame the video and see if you can spot a difference. I can't, but this drive number five no longer does anything basically it no longer recognizes any floppy that's been put into the drive now i've got it such that this drive works with a converted amiga drive and it works with a pc drive through the adapter 
and so long as that is not an SFD 321B. So I could leave it there, but I want to know why the SFD 321B does not work with this um, drive if it is in PC mode. So there has to be a difference between using an adapter and converting it to an Amiga drive. So I sat down and looked at what the conversion to an Amiga drive does. And basically it does four things. One, it converts the drive from DS1 to DS0. That shouldn't make a difference. Two, it connects the ready line to, from, to pin 34. Three, it connects the disk change line to pin 2. And four, it disconnects the density select line that was on pin 2, and it disconnects that. So one of those things has to be different between doing it on here and doing it on here. So I looked in detail at this interface and there's only basically two changes that affect the interface and they involve pin 2 and pin 34. So pin 34 goes basically is the function of this chip or the other chip in that. But pin 2 interestingly is not connected on either of these interfaces. On most of the drives, this tech media is one, um, for example, that doesn't matter. There is a pull up. If, if it uses that density select line at all, there is a pull up inside the drive. Remember, all these connections are open collector. They need a pull up. But I suspect with these Samsungs, pin two, and it's this one on the end, pin two is not pulled up internally and it's left floating. And this interface leaves it floating. So what I've done, just pull out this interface. What I've done is I've connected a 1K resistor. Let's check in the top down camera. A 1K resistor from 5 volts to pin 2. And this is obviously, this is only temporary for the purpose of testing it. And so these three Samsung drives, which I've now actually converted back to being PC drives from being Amiga drives, we're going to try them out and see how well they do. We know how well they did or didn't um, before. So we can now, with this little modification, we can see how well they do again. So let's do that. So the drive is plugged in. This is drive number one, got five and nine here. Everything has been set back to PC mode. Drive is upside down because the flywheel would catch on the base, if not, and things wouldn't turn. So let's power it up and see what happens. The uh, mod is attached to the board, right. So we'll stick a disc in. for Amiga fix. The disk drive, so let's try the one that we formatted in number nine. PC drive nine. And the test demo. Okay, there we go. And there it is. Let's shove another disk in and try formatting this. Directory listing PC drive one, 
from a previous go. <laughs> yes, I did practice this first. I'll call it reconvert and with a code of RC. Ah, whoops. There we go. So that's formatted. Directory listing is correct. Let's take it out. Let's shove a different disk in just to prove that it's not the same disk. There we go, matrix test three. And we can put this disk in that we just formatted. Reconvert. So, drive one and drive nine are shown to work with the new mod. So let's go to drive number five. Exactly the same setup. Remember, this is the one that did not work as an Amiga drive. These are the two disks that we formatted on disks one and nine. Let's just go. We've gone through all of these disks on the other two drives between them. So that did actually spin. But read error. Okay. Let's go to the demo disk. It's trying. But no, drive not ready. So let's just turn this over and see if it's actually moving the heads. I'm going to hold this up so that it doesn't damage the um, flywheel, or at least doesn't impede the flywheel. Uh, yes, it is moving the heads, but twenty three read error that is the one that was formatted on I believe drive one when I'm holding it the right way up. Let's try this one. ooh. I still think there is something wrong with this drive because it does none of this in the Amiga mode unless I screwed something up on the board. Drive not ready. And I've looked at it under the magnifier. I can't see what I have done wrong. I think I have done something wrong to it, but I can't see what. If you can see what's wrong with this drive, please let me know in the comments. So I formalized this modification. Basically I've put the resistor in a heat, sh heat shrink sleeving and just made it nice and tidy. So that shouldn't short out to anything. Now I've put the drives back into their cases. Drive number nine is the one that started off as an Amiga and is now back to being a PC. I'm going to put that into this drive. This is the one, remember it doesn't have a lid. So I know I'll find a little piece of plastic to put over the top. But that is going to go into this one. Drive number one. I have converted this back into an Amiga drive and put it back into here. That is going to go into the dark grey case, which is on the other table. And then drive number five, I've stickered this as being faulty or possibly faulty. 
it has read errors and drive not ready errors and sometime we are going to go and have another look at that and I guess see if we can find out what the problem is. If you happen to have spotted what the problem is please tell me in the comments. So now I'm going to screw these all together and we will just sum up. Okay so here they are both fully working drives. This one has the SFD 321B in PC mode in it, the one with the missing top. That originally started off as an Amiga drive and has been converted back into a PC drive. This one has an SFD 321B in Amiga mode and they are both working. We did not get time to hook them up both at the same time. Uh, maybe we can do that another time. There is one last thing to do and that is to apply a sticker. These came from Badge Man. I'll put a link in the description. He does badges for all sorts of Commodore machines and we're going to have a beige one for this drive. Stick it on, there we go, and we're going to have a black one for this drive. There we go. So, two 1581s in working condition. Thank you very much for watching. Please While editing this video, this arrived. Now, this is another SFD 321B. So, in the interest of more data points, let's have a quick look at it. Now we only have the three SFD drives, so having another one is actually quite a significant increase in our data. Let's just open it up. And hopefully it will tell us more whether the mod that we've done really works or not. So this is another compact SFD 321B standard PC drive. Okay, so let's take this one apart and plug it in because this has got the adapter in it. Okay, lid is off. Right, we have the, let's take that out. Good old drive number nine. that drive is out this drive can go in we want this upside down so that the flywheel is not impeded right so peripheral on first oh that's good that went clicky clicky the green light is on power on the 128 you see, I'm doing it in the right order now. Okay, test demo disk. Directory. The power wire has come out. Let's try that again. Let me just do it. Right, so it's the default DOS. There we go. Take that disc out. Stick that disc in. So that is reading correctly. Stick that disc in again. Yep, that is reading correctly. Now what I'm going to do is actually is just detach the um, resistor from this and use this one again. I've just wrapped the end in some blue masking tape so that it doesn't short out on anything. But that is disconnected from the 5 volts. So we'll put this back on. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, we'll power it back up and see what difference having the unmodified adapter board makes. Okay, so that's on okay. Power the machine up. Right. Disk in the drive. That one red. Disk out. Disk in the drive. That one red. Disc back in the drive. That one red. Another disc, this is disc seven. And that one red. I'm going to format this one. So that formatted OK. Let's take it out. Put another disc in to prove that the disc change is going. Yep. Take it out, put our newly formatted disc back in. Yep. So if you've got this far, thank you for watching. I was kind of hoping that this new drive would show definitively um, that the mod worked but it didn't the drive worked either way around that doesn't disprove the mod but it doesn't prove it either so it's kind of inconclusive I do however think that this mod makes things better it does seem to be with these other two um, drive mechanisms it does seem to be better than it was without the mod so I'm going to ask if you have an SFD 321B and you have the problem with drive not ready errors happening on your 1581 then please try out this mod it's just a simple it's just a simple 1k resistor between pin 2 on the PC side of the adapter and 5 volts try it out see if it works let me know in the comments I'd be really interested to see more data points. So anyway, please check out my Patreon. My existing patrons are scrolling up the screen. And I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.